also with you. Let us pray. O God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah. And in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory, and bring us to enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until you come until we come again to you again. For Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain, in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 99 responsibly after we end upon this song. <laughs> until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you may understand this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen 
And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud a voice said, This is my Son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. The season of Epiphany draws to a close this weekend. This entire season has been, in a way, Jesus' origin story, or his call story, if you will. It began six weeks ago with his baptism, and it ends today with the Transfiguration. These two events, the baptism and the Transfiguration, are the only two instances in Matthew's Gospel where God actually speaks out loud. And both times, God says the same thing. This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Epiphany has been all about following the light and looking for the ways that Jesus is manifest in our lives and in our world. Now today, that light is very clear and obvious. Jesus shines like the sun, the text says. It's very easy to see the light today. But it's much more difficult to see the light of the Christ child in our lives when, our, when his presence is not as obvious and miraculous as it is today in this story. If someone asked you if you've seen Jesus in your life lately, could you respond yes? Do we expect it to always look like it does here? To look like a mountaintop experience? You've heard that phrase from this pulpit and elsewhere before, the mountaintop experiences being those transcendent moments in our lives when we know that we brushed with the divine, when we know that we saw God face to face. Does it always look like this? Is it always transcendent and glorious and awe-inspiring? And does our faith depend upon us always seeing God in such overt ways? It's very normal for us to all wish that we could see things like this, that we could see proof, that we could see a miracle, see the extraordinary, see God face to face and know with no doubt in our hearts at all that, yep, we saw God today. We all wish that we could have those experiences. But God doesn't always appear in our lives in that manner. Are we disappointed if God doesn't do that? Has God failed to meet our expectations of God because we need signs or we won't believe? And what if we're the ones sitting there, and I know you're out there, who says to themselves, I don't feel like I've ever had a mountaintop experience in my life. I hear what that sounds like, and I don't think I've ever had one of those. What then of me? Does God not care about me if God's never appeared in that way to me? Well, we've been talking all throughout Epiphany about the ways in which the extraordinary appears in the ordinary. This story began with Jesus taking Peter and James and John up onto the mountain to pray. Now, mountains would have been highly symbolic for Matthew's Jewish audience. It evokes Mount Sinai and the giving of the law. God appears on mountains a lot in Judaism. But for the disciples, this was something that they did all the time. Jesus would often take them into lonely places up onto a mountainside to get away from the crowds of people that were crushing them everywhere they went. 
so that they could go pray and go on retreat and be alone. So this was something that was routine and commonplace for them. They did this all the time. And then right after this story is concluded, they will go down the mountain and Jesus immediately resumes his ministry of healing. There's a young boy at the bottom of the mountain that needs to be healed. Right as soon as this experience is over, life resumes as normal. The disciples and Jesus go back to their ordinary lives in a broken and fallen world after the mountaintop experience is concluded. When we do have those mountaintop experiences, we want to linger in them. And Peter exemplifies this in the story when he starts nervously babbling something about building tents because he wants to stay in the moment. That moment at the top of the mountain when we know we saw God face to face and we felt safe in God's presence. Peter wants to stay there. But our daily faith walk with God is defined by finding God in the common experiences of our lives. Finding God in our domestic squabbles at home when we're arguing with our spouse. Finding God when we're squabbling with our coworkers. Finding God when we're trying to find ways to be a good citizen, decide who to vote for and what platform we should support. Finding God in the ways that we spend our money to donate to those who are in need. What kind of causes are we going to support? Even finding God when we're trying to decide whether or not to let the jerk in line that's trying to cut in front of us on the road, and we try to decide whether to let him in or not. We cannot just sit around and wait for the next mountaintop experience to happen. We may get one, and we may not. Epiphany has been all about looking for Christ's appearing in the world. And he still appears even if we don't have a mountaintop experience in our ordinary, everyday lives. He appears in our joys and our successes and our blessings. And he also appears in our failures and our sorrows and our tragedies. It's much harder to look for the ways in which he is present in the latter. Right now, there are millions of people homeless in Turkey and Syria right now in the aftermath of the earthquake that are having a really hard time finding where God is present in their lives. Or much closer to home, the thousands of people in East Palestine, Ohio, who are functionally homeless because their homes are no longer safe. But our faith calls us to step out and trust that somehow God is present in those moments as well. We are quick to say thank you, Jesus, when things are going well, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with overflowing with gratitude for God, for the blessings in your life, and wanting to give thanks on the Easter days of our lives. But we are challenged to look for God's presence on the Good Fridays of our lives as well. Immediately before this transfiguration story today, Jesus had just given the disciples the first of his passion predictions in which he will reveal to them what is about to happen in Jerusalem before they hit the road for that city. Immediately after he comes down from this mountain today, they will head up on the road to Jerusalem, the road that leads to crowns of thorns and to floggings and to a Roman cross. It's an appropriate segue, if nothing else, from the season of Epiphany to the season of Lent. As today we will bury our Alleluia, that expression of praise and thanksgiving which we will not speak again until Easter morning. The spiritual renewals of the Lenten season await us soon, and they will involve reflection and examination and repentance. Jesus will be with us on that road as well. We find strength on the mountaintop today as God pronounces God's blessing and approval upon Jesus and his ministry before the road to the cross begins, before the road of Lent begins. And it's important to note that this transfiguration story is also a foreshadowing of the glory of the resurrection. The confirmation that God's love and God's power to conquer death will be waiting for us at the end of the world. In the meantime, on the road to Jerusalem, on the road of Lent, if we have difficulty finding God in the ordinary places of our lives, we will keep coming back to this place. 
this place of worship and study and prayer. We will come back to this place where we hear God's voice in the voice of our pastor and our siblings and our choir, in the traditions of our faith, in liturgy and song and story. These voices will help us to become more attentive to finding the places where the divine is inbreaking into our real human lives, even in the midst of our brokennesses and our pains and our tears. We will return to this place because, even if we haven't had a mountaintop experience lately, we know God is present here in word and in sacrament because Jesus promised us that it would be so. We will come here and we will receive strength for the journey, strength for the road, just as the disciples received in the, in the transfiguration today. Like the disciples, Jesus says to us today, arise and do not be afraid of the road ahead.
Embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Equip the lay persons, preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Dwell with your whole creation from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of our conservation organizations and protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world, especially Lutheran World Relief and all the efforts for Turkey and Syria. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide and give wisdom to all authority. Our mayor, our local leaders, our governor and state legislators, our president and national legislators. Bring freedom and justice to all nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany with those your touch those who are homebound, sick, sick or isolated. We pray for those who have asked us to do so, remembering Catherine, Jennifer, Lori, Benjamin, Joe, Carol, Dan, Carly, Cherry, Martha, Jan, Mary Rose, Charlotte, Brandon, Alice, Lorraine, Andrea, Judy, Ruth, Bill, George, Jim, Sally, Tim, Lavera, Janice, Ray, Ruth, Eugene, Aurora, Carla, Tony, Lori, Mark, Donna, Hob, Norma, Glenn, Ron, Linda, Elaine, David, Mike, Marsha, Willie, John, Johnny, Kenny, Karen, Sue, John, Evan, Kathleen, Jake and Megan, Ron and Angus, and the Giz Guza, Guzda family, the Doherty's, the Lauderbaugh's, Massalino, Fortney, Car Sarsfield, Nagy, and Zaischek families, those who travel, those who serve in the military, in law enforcement, and as first responders, and all of those who seek the comfort of God's love and remain now either silently or aloud. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Make us eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us to recognize Jesus' voice in the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the ways of the cross. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our thanksgiving to Brad, Jeff, Renee, Santo, Megan, and all of the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered us, even the unlikely as your people. With our forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We grant to you our needs and hopes, O God. Trust in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. You'll find announcements in your bulletin very quickly. Um, if you offer any contributions to Lutheran World Relief's efforts in Turkey and Syria, our council has voted to match those donations two to one. So if you make those donations through the church, we'll be able to send one contribution from all of us together. Um, just note um, earthquake in the memo line at the check or write it on the envelope. Um, right after church today, we're going to be burning palms for Ash Wednesday. So thanks to anyone who brought in palms. We're just going to be outside, kind of right on the step um, on the side here. So it only takes a few minutes. It's a neat um, thing to do. Our ashes for Ash Wednesday do come from somewhere. Um, speaking of Ash Wednesday, we have services at 12 and 7. Um, and we're also trying something new this year with drive through ashes um, at 5 o'clock. So as you come in, um, roll your window down and get what you need. Um, also, um, if you can't make it to any of those things and you think you might either be watching our streamed service online or you might just like to take a quiet moment of prayer for yourself, 
Um, there's a basket here in the side entryway that has a short prayer service you can do on your own and a little packet of ashes, um, or perhaps you'd like to bring them to a neighbor. Those are available for you as well. Um, our Lent education, um, our adult um, class begins next week at 9 o'clock, um, right before church on Sunday. We're going to be meeting all the Sundays in Lent for five sessions, talking about discipleship um, through the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. So we'll look at different dimensions of discipleship. Everyone's welcome to come, even if you haven't come to adult ed before, even if you don't know if you can come to all five, please come. It's a lovely way of marking the season of Lent. Um, as always, we share communion as part of worship every week. We use real bread and real wine. Gluten-free wafers and grape juice are always available. As you come up, you'll receive bread or a wafer for me, and then move to the side for grape juice or wine. Everyone who is baptized from any tradition is welcome to receive. If you prefer instead to receive a blessing, just cross your arms over your chest like this. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your work and shape us as people of your justice, freedom, and love. In the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Sharing our life, Jesus lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. <laughs>
body press. Body pressing. Body pressing. Body pressing. Body pressing. Body pressing.
even when we receive at your table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you as we share in your abundant grace. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say goodbye to our Alleluia's for Lent. So I'm told that our kids made a representation for us of an Alleluia that we can bury, as it were. So can I have that? So, and I'm going to ask the kids to help us in being a little extra loud with these hallelujahs. Because sometimes grown-ups get embarrassed about being loud, but you need to show us the way, okay? I think you, I think you do. All right, let's see our hallelujah here. There, there's two, absolutely. I'll take two. Here we go. So we've got hallelujah. We've got some names on it. Fantastic. Is that Brontosaurus? <laughs> Excellent. I know. It's a good brunch of source. I knew right where it was. Hallelujah. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them behind the altar. Okay, so you guys remember that they're there. And then at Easter, we'll pull them out again. Okay? All right, so I want you guys to shout as I'm doing this. All right, ready? Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> and then we get a prayer. Enclose and seal up the word, Alleluia. Let it remain the secret of your heart until we meet Jesus Christ at Easter and shout with great joy. Alleluia! <laughs>